Hello and welcome to the Ski Racing Podcast Extra with me, Ed Drake. Joining me again is ski expert Todd Nilsson. Uh, we're going to be taking a look back at the action from last weekend where the women raced double slalom up in Levy, Finland. And what a set of races it, it was. It was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah, mega. It was about a month ago we were together. Yeah. It's nice to be back in it. Yeah. Now it's going to go thick and fast the whole way through to what are we saying, Easter? Hopefully, you, fingers crossed. Yeah, there's not an awful lot of uh, gaps in the calendar now, especially as they've spread stuff out because yeah. of COVID. So we're now getting uh, less downtime and the racing is going to be thick and fast, as you say. But this weekend, no so Swedes good to be back. As well. no, no Swedes, no. No Swedes, none of my countrymen were there. No, no. You know, let's just quickly kind of touch on that. You know, they weren't there. Yeah, so it was a real shame um, and they got a positive COVID test. So one of the coaches of the Swedish team, they weren't on. So there was a charter flight that took most of the um, World Cup tour up to Finland, but the Swedes were already around there. So they weren't on that flight. Um, but one of the coaches tested positive um, and then sort of Fizz were like, right, we'll isolate you and then we'll carry on racing. And then a, a second coach um, also tested positive. And then the, I believe the Finnish government stepped in and went, yeah, you're not none of you are coming that is and allowed yep. to race yep. so um it was taken out of physics a real shame but i mean you can kind of get it because imagine if it went rife through the whole tour then you know then we don't race for two weeks um it it sucks totally the and luckily the political uh, activity between finland and sweden are so uh, positive at the moment <laughs> i mean <laughs> take what you will from that anyway moving on to the racing yep. um obviously a double header yeah. Uh, so let's hit the first race. Um, we had Lensberger in third. Yeah. So um, it was yeah no men's racing this week. No. In Levy, which is a bit of a shame, but we did get double races off. Uh, Lensberger, Austrian, managed to pick up the uh, bottom step on the podium. She skied really nicely. She was super aggressive. I mean, she's become consistent over the last season or a couple of seasons or so. She finished third in the overall standings of the slalom tour title last season so she's no stranger to uh, the podium but she really pushed the lady she was only at 0.57 off the win so yeah good, which is good showing she's pretty good um second i mean i don't know what to say Schifrin, she's back yeah. 300 days away right it's insane off, i mean that is just brilliant to see her back she put up a fight yeah um 0.18 from uh, from the eventual winner the hover yeah so it what a woman, right? Yeah, it's so good to see Schifrin back. Um, we've been itching to see her back. She nearly made a comeback after the tragedy uh, that happened from her father dying back in uh, the end of January last mm -hmm. season. So she took a step back. Then we expected to see her. She announced that she was going to come back at the end of last season, but then COVID happened. And then finally she decided that uh, she missed Solden because of a back injury. <laughs> and then she decided that Levy was going to be where it was at, 300 days away from World Cup. And she manages to put in an absolute fight. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, just narrowly lost out. She skied really well, a little bit of rust, maybe some tactical stuff that she'll pick up on. And she's only going to get faster, which is a little ominous considering I mean, she was so close to the win already. Pardon the pun, we'll let it slide this time, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. <laughs> anyway, um, let's look at the eventual winner, the Hover. Yeah. Um, we're going to drill down into how she won. Yeah. Um, so should we do that now? Yeah, yeah. Let's. Um, she, she skied amazing, though, at the same time. as She oh, just managed phenomenal. to put... She is so strong and so consistent as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's take a quick look at how she got it done. So this is Vlahova's winning run. So this is the one where she's already been leading after the first run. So she has all the pressure come this second run of race one. Look how aggressive she is up here. You can see just how much drive there is here. Well, look how hard this hip right here just manages to stay really tall at the top part of the turn up here. Let's try and pause that in a better place. You can see here this hip nice and high allows her to keep driving the hips through and build pressure. But you can see towards the end of the turn, hips drop back. She juices the tail of the ski, which is fine on the flats because you have time to move through. If you try and do that on the steeps, you'll just wheelie your way down the run and you can see here it's super aggressive getting loads of flexion under these short skis 155 length skis but getting a great little bend on this hard ice compact ice great separation as well it, all the things you need when you're on compact ice and this top part she spends her time being super aggressive quick three through those verticales uh, and now she's setting up as she rolls over onto the steep it's so slick down here quick quick three I get my words out quick feet 
through this hairpin and now she's breaking over onto the steep so you can just see tactics slightly change upper body starts to calm as she just makes sure that the technique is pinpoint perfect you just see move slightly over the inside which is why we're getting all this spray coming up on the side just here but she doesn't panic get straight back on top of it just skips the first part of the turn which we often talk about in slalom skiing is what you have to do on the steep because it's just too icy and steep to be carving out the top part of the turn but this is all important right now comes through that banana gate nice and high nice early line as she exits here good across the hill skis pointing across and then she bends up right at the start of the turn the ski is getting good flexion as she then powers her way down across the steep still got three tenths of a second but this is where she gets back into rhythm super quick nice and smooth over that final roller and that is day one job done okay thanks ed that was awesome um we move on to race two obviously being a double header we were back in levy yeah. on the sunday right yeah, same place. <laughs> for another slalom um how was it what, what did you take from that uh it, i think it's quite tired interesting legs? yes yeah i definitely was very tired <laughs> <laughs> no, the race, it was it was actually quite interesting to watch a double because normally we don't see a double in the same discipline you, you know you'll have a slalom in a gs or a downhill in a super g or whatever so you totally. so it's quite interesting to see how people operate whether they learn stuff from race one to race two and how we saw a couple of different people which we'll get to on the podium or doing well yeah. um, and going the opposite way. Um, but it was a belter of a second race. N great snow conditions yet again. The piece looked in perfect condition and we had something to smile about from a British for a We did indeed. Let's talk Charlie Guest. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think everybody has, that has anything to do with British ski racing is super stoked for yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, how did, how did she do so well? Like, you know, what were the deciding factors in her race? Well, she narrowly missed out on a second run in race one. So she obviously knuckled down, looked at the video, decided where she could have gone better. And she was way more aggressive in race two. She was a little bit more direct up top uh, and she was... and way better movement down the steep and better movement means that the skis react better if you ski with a stiff leg you're bracing if you're able to flex and extend you're building pressure you're actually helping the ski bite and then you're propelling yourself down the hill so she did that really nicely on run, run one managed to get herself i think it was just a, a 1.6 ish yeah. i can't remember off the top of my head where the disc time deficit was but skied really nicely got herself a second run and she was skiing so well in the second run the top section looked like she didn't really have any nerves she was aggressive she wasn't skiing for the finish she then nailed it down the steep was really aggressive and you can you can let her off but the last quarter she took her foot off the gas a little yeah. bit and and i think all of a sudden she'd realized that she'd skied the top bit really well she realized that she'd nailed the steep yeah. and then it was coming into the finish with like sort of 20 gates left to go and I don't blame her she just seemed to back off slightly and she finished in 26th place Which her is... first ever World Cup classic World Cup slalom yeah. point she scored points in parallel before but that's which is just mega. awesome and maybe because she didn't have that second run on the Saturday she was a bit fresher in the legs you know not as fatigued we know that Schifrin was knackered on the Sunday yeah. after her uh, you know, race on the, race, the, yeah, the, the Saturday. The first, yeah. So, you know, maybe that was a, a blessing in disguise to a certain degree. Yeah, it could have been. I mean, I'm sure she would have taken two points finishing. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I think she, <laughs> but in, in, you know, she took the best out of what she could. Yeah, failed in race one, nailed it in race two. And uh, all in all, what a platform for the rest of the season. Totally. Right, so let's move into race two, the podium. Yeah. Uh, so, Linsberger. Linsberger. Yeah, <laughs> second podium. Brilliant. I know, right? Yeah, another really quality performance. She had to sort of put her foot down a little bit, as it were, in the second run, because she, I think she was in sixth or something yeah. in, after the first run, and she just um, was a little bit more aggressive, had to sort of fight her way back, uh, and she took a few more risks, which she didn't take on the first run. She just nailed uh, that transition from the steep to the flat, which, again, we talk about it a lot in, in ski racing, but that's so crucial, and she was aggressive, and the Austrians had a really good day. They had five in the top 15, having bags on them for uh, subpar performances for a little while Absolutely. the ladies are, are, are looking to bring it in the tech disciplines totally and funnily enough i mean really similar 0.5 away from the eventual winner yeah very similar to yeah. the saturday consistency to yeah. a certain degree <laughs> absolutely and you and that's part of ski racing and you yeah. look at schiffer and you look at verhova and one of their best qualities is consistency and it looks like leansberger so far 
obviously we're only a couple of races in, but she's being consistent and, and she's giving herself a real good shot. Half a second off. I think if the women's racing is that close throughout the rest of the season, we're in for a real uh, awesome contest. Absolutely. Second, Gissing. Gissing. Yeah. Gissing. I really struggled with the pronunciation, I apologise. Um, <laughs> one away from Lahova. Again, you put a bet on. I did, yeah. I'm, I'm very smug, feeling very I mean, smug. First um, thing you said to me today. Yeah, it's so if, if, was. <laughs> if, you, um, if you listen to the podcast, the actual podcast, you'll have to check it out. And we run the Ski Racing Podcast Predictions, which is sponsored by a really cool company called Powderhand. So go and check them out. And so part of the podcast is we do this Predictions League, for those yeah, of you that don't know. Yeah. And um, and so myself and Ben Clark, who's, who's always on the pod, um, put our picks in. And we try and stay away from the favourites because we should just have, I don't make it, not, not make it harder. You should it makes never it sound, win your own competition. That's yeah, well, yeah, maybe. Okay. <laughs> um, but so we sort of have to pick, a, you know, not the favourites. And I just went for Gassin because she was, last season, she showed some really good stuff in the combination, like the combined races, yep. the Alpine combines. And I just had a bit of a thing that she, she might be able to start putting that sort of form into the uh, classic slalom and she nailed it she was joint leader with Lahova on run one yep. she held her nerve she skied really nice she made up some time she obviously she ended up losing time overall mm. but she made up some time down the steep and then lost it towards the finish but she yep. was you know she's becoming a real contender in a classic slalom which we wouldn't have really said about that said about her in that way before so and for the Swiss women haven't won a slalom in the, again the stats on the on the internet somewhere as, a, as they all are but it's it's an incredible amount of time and she's looking like she ben, could be ben would have known yeah ben would have known that um, <laughs> yeah and now the swiss aren't just relying on sendy wendy exactly <laughs> sendy wendy i mean it's really interesting what you said there um she was the same as Vahova um after run one yeah explain a little bit of the absolute like fractions of time and and what really comes into having exactly the same time. You well, know? you've got you've got 70 odd turning gates, 60, 60, high 60s, low 70 turning gates, mm. and over a you know, best part of a minute's worth of ski racing, and to be bang on the same it, it is insane. And therefore, yep. margins are, are incredible. So if you miss a push out the start gate, if you, you have a slight hesitation on one of your entries into, you know, into one of the turns, so that's the difference. And, and, and Gissin didn't, didn't win, but she lost by... 0.13 which is a fraction of a second yeah you know, which is it's, it's, it's really it's insane mind, isn't it when you, when you put it into that kind of frame of mind really, yeah isn't it um which takes us on to Vlahova. yeah another win another reindeer yeah she's got a few, a few reindeers now <laughs> she's got to run out of three it. three reindeers now I think. yeah well no actually she has one i've got the stat here write it down this for this stat right <laughs> and um, she has had five race wins in a row in levy Right. So she okay. now yeah. is the is the kind of, is the owner of five reindeer. Well, she sets. basically has a herd. Yeah, so she's about to. Go. <laughs> so Father Christmas is going to be ringing them up. Is I need an extra couple of reindeer. Yours look like they could be quite fast. Absolutely. <laughs> um, now, now she wasn't obviously fatigued from Saturday, which is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, you know, how did she win in the end? She. Uh, you, it's turning into classic Vlahova. She was again very powerful, very dynamic. I think she took. Uh, she was a bit more aggressive on that top section of the second run. I think from between split one and split two, she made up a, a considerable amount of time. Yeah. Um, and then was just quite reserved down the steep, took a cut, didn't really take too many risks, but she just didn't make any mistakes. She was clean, she was smooth. Uh, she made one mistake down the steep, but it was at the midpoint in the steep, so she still had time to take some speed off and onto the flat. Yeah. So she skied really well, and uh, and it's it bodes well for her for the rest of the season. Uh, but what was interesting is, is we heard a bit about Schifrin and we saw, we'd spoken about her in race one, how she did so well, yeah. is that she just said that she was exhausted after race one, both physically and mentally drained, mm. which when you've spent so long away from it, and obviously the emotions for her to come back and be on the podium, uh, it's it was unsurprising that she wasn't able to reproduce yeah. form from race one into race two but by no means is that going to be the case for the rest of the year oh, so no. she'll, be, she'll be back she is going to be back and she's going to be on it absolutely um right should we dive down into properly how she won yeah let's do it let's do it so slightly different on race two vlahova is um on course but you've also got michelle gissin who's still in the gate ready to have her run as they were joint but because gissin had a higher start number it means that she uh, gets to go last. So Vlahova here is trying to put pressure on Gissin, who's still in the start gate, and there's not a lot that a, 
will put the pressure on is watching your competitor go just before you and absolutely motor the top section, which is what she does yet again. Similar to yesterday, the top section, she is so smooth and so clean. Look at this again. That sort of separation on this slick ice. There's a slight fall away here. If you go, it's a, it's a slight fall away this way. So everything is dragging you this direction. So which means that when she's coming around here, the, the skis are bending up, which is why the separation is so important to keep that inside shoulder high to allow that flex. And you can see how bent up that outside ski is. And she uses that power and propels herself so fast down the hill that she's carrying way more speed through this section. Uh, again, quick feet through this hairpin. She moves through that with the, the upper body. The arms, she gets a lot of quite a lot of arm movement on the flat, but the actual shoulders don't really move. So she's trying to give herself a little bit of extra propulsion from her arms, but in the same point, her upper body is so still. Look at that separation. Inside hands on the ground, we often talk about separation, but if you can keep an eye on her shoulders here, her hips are slightly to the inside, but because we're on a flat surface, you can kind of get away with that. If you're on the steep, you'll definitely see more of an angle across uh, with that inside hip, inside shoulder slightly higher. But she's moved so quickly, so cleanly through these turns. There's a bit more swing in the second course from the second day than there was in the first run. But again, she settles down on this steep section and keeps a really high line. She doesn't take any undue risks on the steep. She really allows the work to be done at the top, nails the bottom of the steep and onto the flat. And this part is all about just trying to make sure that she's being super clean without making any major errors. Just this turn is unbelievable. Look at that ski really bent up, proper good separation. Inside knee doing the same work as the outside. And let's see if we can grab a side on shot here. Really high hip again, just allowing all that pressure coming down onto the tips of these Rosie skis and the snow flinging up backwards. She does drift her way in, but when she drifts in, because the hip is high, it means that she can then get find clean pressure when she does go to look for that arc. With You drop your hip and you're trying to find a clean edge whilst on the steep the ski will bounce sideways. That's why a high hip is so crucial. Dances through that vertically quick feet. That was her only real error. She just bounced in here. The pressure came on all of a sudden, which propelled the hips further back and it projected the skis across, which meant she just missed that initiation phase on that new outside ski. But again, didn't panic. Again, look at that straight back into an early line and then nails this section. Again, there's that final split. You can see her move into high gear and just watch her try and power her way nice and smooth over that final roller. And that was the run that put all the pressure on Gissin, who ended up being second. But what a run that was. Cool. Cheers, Ed. Awesome to see her take the double. Yeah. Um, let's see what happens next time, right? Yeah. So um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Don't forget, you give us a like, give us a share, and make sure you subscribe so you can keep up to date with all of it. The World Cup is back this coming Thursday and Friday, which is the 26th and 27th of this month, where we will be racing parallel, ladies first, men second, where the uh, it's going to be exciting to see. Can't wait for that some head-to-head -head action. That's going to be awesome. It's going to be good. Till then, goodbye for now. See ya.